Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. Uh, so we are again in front of our very nice background image of this rover on Mars, which um, essentially is a autonomously operating uh, device. And uh, we hope that we will soon be able to analyze and design algorithms that uh, drive systems such as these rovers. So what we were looking at last time was uh, the notion of function classes, right? We had sort of uh, began our discussion on uh, the Lyapunov's direct method, right? And leading up to it, we required uh, first the notion of function classes. And then we defined three classes of functions, right? And uh, beyond that, we uh, started speaking about notions of definiteness. Right? We started speaking about notions of definiteness. We had defined the first notion of positive definiteness of a function. All right. So uh, let's look at where uh, we go from there today. So this is lecture. Uh, 4.1 now so we are now into our fourth week lectures right uh, so if you look at uh, how we define this we define positive definiteness as uh, requiring a couple of things first is that you know you have a scalar valued continuous function of course of this form it takes two arguments which is the time and the state and then we need it to be uh, zero value for all val all uh, zero states, right? And further, we require it to dominate a class K function in some local region, that is in some ball around the origin and for all time. Okay, so we, we have these requirements. We made a very, very nice illustrative image to indicate that uh, though it dominates a class K function, it itself need not be a strictly increasing function. And in fact, it can just cross over this class K function beyond a certain, you know, radius or beyond a certain uh, bound on the states R. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is sort of try to connect uh, what we learned about definiteness of matrices to definiteness of functions, right? So because we are using the same terminology, uh, one wonders whether these two are indeed connected or not all right so the first um uh, you know i mean we we saw that definiteness of matrices uh, of, of symmetric positive definite uh, symmetric matrices has um, you know three equivalent conditions the first being this kind of a quadratic form which is required to be positive for all non zero states and then you have something like you know the eigenvalue conditions that is all eigenvalues of A have to be strictly positive. Notice that because it is a symmetric matrix, uh, all the eigenvalues are in fact real. Right? All the eigenvalues are in fact real. In fact, this is a what is called a diagonalizable matrix. Okay, all symmetric matrices are in fact diagonalizable. Okay, and uh, further we have, uh, sorry, further we have. Um, that this all principal minus have to have a positive determinant all right so let's look at you know something let's look at some uh, sort of a, a function construction based on this so suppose using this guy right, i define a function v um, so from here i define a function v tx well, I define two functions. I mean, I define, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, why don't I do this? I define V T comma X as say T times 
uh, x transpose ax okay i just in fact if you notice all i did was i took the same quadratic form right here i take this so one thing is obvious that this is continuous it is taking both state and time and mapping it to a real number because this is a real number right a is an n by n matrix so the question that we want to ask ourselves is that is a a positive definite matrix sorry is sorry yeah if a is a positive definite matrix the question we want to ask is is the function b also positive definite okay the quick answer is yes so i don't want to keep any suspense anyway it should be obvious to a lot of you and this is in fact the case so the first thing i can i can see is that this is greater than equal to uh you know okay let me be careful here is this t in fact i made this example here too actually in this example too i think i said t but i think it's better if i take an e to the power t because if i take t it is not necessarily greater than equal to this class k function because at t equal to zero there is a problem okay t equal to zero there is a problem or else of course i can in this case i can do something simpler i will define this as t plus one okay so this is greater than or equal to x transpose ax for all t greater than or equal to zero all right so i have this to be true okay so i already have a you know like a time independent function on the right hand side the only question i want to ask is uh whether this is a um you know this is a class k function or not whether this is a class k function or not now one thing i know for sure is that for a symmetric matrix a i can write this as some uh, y transpose lambda y right where um i apologize where you have this uh, lambda is the diagonal matrix matrix of eigenvalues okay lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues okay so right this should be again this should be something that's evident to us that lambda is the this is basically the standard jordan decomposition for a symmetric matrix so lambda here is a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues of the matrix a right so what do i know about x transpose ax right so this this guy x transpose ax right is simply x transpose uh, y transpose lambda y x okay so this is yeah so this is basically y x transpose uh, i'm sorry let me be careful here this is not y this is ah i apologize this is not some vector y this is not some vector y this is actually equal to some matrix so m is eigenvectors of a okay the eigenvector matrix it's not this is not quite right let me redo this so this is x transpose m transpose lambda m x and that's basically mx transpose lambda mx okay so 
so m is of course inverse is equal to m transpose in fact okay m inverse is m transpose for the symmetric matrix case so the inverse actually exists and it's <coughs> it's in fact equal to the transpose okay so you have mx transpose lambda mx so you know that uh, what do i know so i know that this is basically some kind of a function uh, so let me call y equal to mx then this is equal to y transpose lambda y which is simply a summation over i lambda i y i squared yeah because where lambda i's where these small lambda i's are eigenvalues of eigenvalues of a right now because a is positive definite i know that lambda i's are positive right so this is basically what can i say i can say that this is essentially a uh, just a quadratic summation of quadratics just like what you have in a quadratic form this is what it means to be a quadratic form okay so basically this is something like a lambda i y i squared okay so though not in the original states but in some transformed states notice this transformation is very nice because m is an invertible matrix right it's a very nice transformation right and through this transformation i get this summation lambda i y i squared right and i claim that this is in fact a class k function in the original variables also okay because again i mean it's not i'm not going to do the rest of the math here because i will i have an easier test for doing positive definiteness which i'll come to soon but my claim is that this is a x transpose ax is in fact a class k function okay so this is my claim belongs to class k now uh, but i can already see that it is a sum of quadratics all right and um, because it is a sum of quadratics it is also going to be a sum of quadratics in x it's equivalent right and therefore this is and you know that the sum of quadratics in x is a class k function right basically if i give you a function of the form x1 square plus x2 square we know it's a class k function excuse me all right great great so this is not complete i know that you are not yet convinced that this is a positive definite function but you see that if i'm given a positive definite matrix i have positive eigenvalues right and i get a quadratic in a sort of a modified state which is y equal to mx right so this much let's remember this much let this claim maybe we come to later but let's not worry about that uh, so the point is uh, there is a clear connection okay and we'll establish that connection sooner than you think yeah so that is where we come to the easier conditions so one of the issues with uh, this this condition that we have that is vtx has to dominate a class k function uh, one of the issues with this is that um, it's very difficult to verify right because you have to actually find a class k function which the v dominates now the other issue is if you do, if you are unable to find such a class k function that is not enough to claim that v is not positive definite okay this is because you may have missed being able to find yeah it, it could also be our own incompetence that we could not find a class k function yeah um so just because we could not find a class k function does not automatically imply that v is not positive definite all we can say is that if we do find a class k function v is positive definite but if we don't find a class k function we cannot for sure say that it is a, uh, not a positive definite function okay so uh, we want easier conditions where we can say for certainty so we have two different conditions the first one is then the v which we are now denoting w depends only on the state 
okay if the function depends only on the state and not explicitly on time okay so therefore we have used a different sort of symbol here w but it doesn't matter call it v or w call it whatever z your call okay uh, so this function w now depends only on the state therefore its argument is just br and it maps to real numbers with x being mapped to wx and it has if it satisfies two conditions okay the first is that it is 0 at 0 which is the same as this guy this is easy to verify so we are not really modifying this condition right again no time appears here because of course there's no time argument right so we want the w0 to be exactly 0 and next we want wx to be strictly positive for all non zero values of the states okay we want w to be strictly positive for all non zero values of the states all right okay so then the function is said to be positive definite okay so let me go to the second definition which before i go back to our matrix example again now if we do have a function which depends on both state and time this may be unavoidable for certain dynamical systems especially dynamical systems where the vector field also explicitly depends on time as we have been considering in our stability definitions it might become impossible to avoid having a time argument explicitly in the lyapunov candidate construction so this v function construction right so in those cases what do we require as usual the first condition remains because this is easy to verify yeah and the second condition requires that this vtx dominate a positive definite w simple we've used the sort of used this previous uh, guy right here yeah because v is a function of the state also of the time of time also explicitly and we have no direct test for dealing with that what do we do we say that vtx just has to dominate a positive definite function just a positive definite function we are not saying a class k function remember we are just saying positive definite function and this is much easier right because i can verify positive definiteness with this easy tests and once i have that easy test satisfied and we dominate this positive definite function then vtx is also said to be positive definite okay so and this domination of course has to happen for all t in r and for all x which is in in br but zero so this is what we need okay so these are the two conditions of course the notation is um, that you know v is greater than zero is positive but if we want to talk about negative definiteness we just say that minus v needs to be positive definite and in negative definite cases we didn't we use this notation v is less than zero so whenever i use a function and say it's less than zero or greater than zero i mean it's positive or negative definite now let's look at our matrix example again okay so yeah we want to sort of complete uh, apologize discussing our matrix example right so what was the function we took v of x as well we took v of tx as t plus 1 x transpose but, sorry i really apologize for that what did i take it as i think i right i took it as x transpose ax okay and the first thing i know i can do is that this is greater than equal to wx which is exactly equal to x transpose ax okay so i think what i'll do is i will not claim you know I, earlier i said that i claim positive uh, class k so i'll not do that anymore because we don't really need that and i'm not going to be able to directly prove it anyway so i'm not going to claim that what i'm going to instead claim that this is in fact positive definite okay so let's look at uh, we've already seen wx is x transpose ax 
is actually equal to summation over i lambda i y i squared okay where y is basically equals to mx and a is written as m transpose lambda m so this is the eigenvalue decomposition and this is just the eigenvalue transformation eigenvector transformation okay and of course we know that m is invertible right we know that m is invertible and it is exactly equal to m transpose all right so m is invertible and it is exactly equal to m transpose all right so so what do i have i have basically this sort of a uh, expression here right so let me sort of uh, right make a nice big box around it ah always end up doing this okay let's see right okay so this is what we have now okay now what do i need to show for wx to be positive definite i need to show that w0 is 0 that's obvious and right? because if i plug x equal to 0 here it's definitely 0 no problem the second point is the more difficult one i want to show that wx is strictly positive for all x not equal to zero i'm not using any br here because this is there is no br yeah in fact i will i can even say this i'm in this case i'm trying to prove that yeah if i remove the origin from rn then except for the origin everywhere else this wx has to be strictly positive and it is not difficult to see that it is okay because because of this guy because of this transformation you have that x not equal to zero is equivalent to y not equal to zero okay i hope this is obvious to you simply because m is an invertible matrix because m is invertible a non-zero x is equivalent to a non-zero y and vice versa and whenever i say zero i am very casually putting this zero but i hope all of you are very clear with this notation whenever i say non-zero it means that i am talking about the zero vector yeah zero vector so when i say x is not zero i mean not every element of x is zero some elements are still allowed to be zero of course all right so here we are speaking about just a zero vector that is every element is zero and a non-zero vector means that at least some elements are non-zero okay at least some not every element non-zero okay this is not component wise or anything this is exactly how it's written in typical mathematics right a non-zero vector means there are some elements for sure which are non-zero all right excellent excellent so once i know this right once i understand that x not equal to zero implies y not equal to zero and that is these are equivalent so whenever x is whenever x is not zero y is not zero so so i can simply say from here that this implies that y um i don't have so x not equal zero equivalent to y not equal zero which implies summation i lambda i y i square not equal zero since lambda i's are strictly positive right because i assume there is positive definite therefore all lambda i's are strictly positive and so i equal to one to n if you may if you want to make it more precise yeah so you have that every lambda is positive therefore 
if y is not a zero vector, there is some element which is non-zero, and therefore this cannot be zero because each of them is you know contributing something. There is no subtractions here, right? It's only summations, right? So once I have this argument clear, right, that if x is not zero, then this quadratic form, that is, this quadratic is non-zero, which implies that uh, in fact, not just zero, this is in fact, I should make it more clear that this is in fact greater than zero. It's not just uh, not zero, it is greater than zero, simply because this quantity can never be less than zero. Yeah, this quadratic form can never be less than zero. It is greater than zero or equal to zero. Therefore, this immediately is equivalent to this. Okay? Therefore, I immediately say that Wx is strictly positive if x not equal to z and i'm done so wx is a positive definite function and vtx dominates this wx right because this is just going to be more than e greater than or equal to one right and therefore because vtx dominates this wx and wx has been proven to be a positive definite function Therefore, I have a positive uh, definite Vtx, right? So, what have we concluded? That, uh, so remark, positive definite matrices lead to positive definite function constructions okay so just in the uh, we probably want to see uh, at least one more example right now so let's look at you know, another example so let's say vtx in this case, I specify it as x1, x2. So I'm x1, x2 are scalars, of course. So if I look at this as a, a t plus 1 times, uh, in fact, why don't I just do this? I don't need this. I just use x, and this is here I say norm x squared divided by 1 plus norm x squared okay so this is again greater than or equal to norm x squared divided by 1 plus norm x squared okay so this is same at wx so this is of course again positive definite function this is again a positive definite function why you look at w0 is 0 okay if so this is the first point now if norm x not equal to 0 yeah so equivalent to x not equal to 0 right x is not equal to 0 means norm of this x was also not 0 all right so then uh so if x is not if norm x is not zero you can see that w of x is strictly positive and very easy to conclude right in fact in fact i can you know it's even easier if you notice that w x can be written as one minus one over one plus norm x squared okay so if x is in fact i don't even need to write it in this form even in this form it's obvious if norm x is non-zero then this is strictly positive this is strictly positive this is strictly positive but then this is just dividing this guy so so the numerator and denominator are both strictly positive so this is a no fraction which is strictly positive right so i'm done so implies of course that 
positive definite or v greater than zero in our notation okay great so what have we talked about today we continued our discussion on uh, definiteness and uh, we connected the notion of definiteness of matrices to that of functions and we saw that positive definite matrices yield positive definite functions and this is a very very standard way of constructing um, Lyapunov functions in fact so v these v's are essentially uh, we'll see our Lyapunov functions called Lyapunov functions right so and then we of course saw you know these alternate tests for positive definiteness which are easier to actually verify and we used uh, this to uh, construct you know some examples of positive definite functions so we'll again continue uh, on you know this line a little bit more and uh, yeah i mean we will of course uh, this is again leading up to the lyapunov theorems all right excellent so that's all for this session thank you and we'll meet again mm -hmm.